Alright, and we are back! I'm gonna water my mouth. <laughs> One sec. Hope you enjoyed them duct tape. Sorry, we had to cut it a little bit short, I think. But, we do have a game on our hands, and we are beginning our best of five grand finals. PVZ. Yes, we are back once again. Hope you enjoyed all the lovely duct tape shout out to Vortex Land for making that happen. And this is it. We've made it to the grand finals, puppy. See, si, puppy, see. Si. And of course, we are going to be kicking it off here on Moon Dance. We're in the top left hand corner map, spawning all the way in the top left hand corner. We have. Our red Protoss player coming out from the land of Korea, representing Team Super. He is the number one seed of today's tournament, Chance. And spawning in the bottom right hand corner of Moon Dance, we have. Oh, our blue Zerg player himself representing Team Platoon and hailing from the land of Belarus, it is Nikic. That was a time earlier in today's tournament late when I thought we were a shoo-in for a brand new champion, but now things are a little bit more up in the air. Yeah, yeah, they are, because we saw that Chance could definitely bleed against a player like Epa, but the thing is that, like, in my mind, Nikic is a bit of a wild card. Again, we've never casted him before. He is a rising star in recent weeks, and he's been performing really well in these online uh, ESL tournaments, but we haven't personally seen that, and yeah, I don't know how to compare Nikic to a player like Epa. I don't know how to compare him to a player like Chance. Well, I don't know. Well we, well, we definitely know that he likes his ultras. True. That's something to keep in mind. But of course, it was kind of strange seeing his games against Quantel. I feel like they were very rare occurrences where a player like Nikic is actually able to tech up into ultras that, that quickly. Mm. Chance mm. should be harassing a little bit more, you know, should be making it a little bit more difficult for Nikic to get comfortable. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how comfortable these players can get. I hope Nikit was watching Eba versus Chance because I think you could gleam a lot from that series. Specifically, I don't think Chance is going to allow Nikit to get ultras out. That's the thing, right? We saw how unorthodox Chance can be. I'd be shocked if at, if at any point he went triple Oracle into Blink Stalkers. Like, it just doesn't feel like that's what he's comfortable with. We haven't seen him do that previously in this tournament. We haven't seen him do that, period. I don't know if he's going to whip that out in the Grand Finals. You know what? He might as well. <laughs> there was never a time. True, true. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. It's now or never. So far, we do see Stargate opener. Oracle first, not Void Ray. So we'll see what he has in store for us. But... Yeah, looking to be a little bit more aggressive in the early game. Looking to get a little bit more harassed. Either that or... You just want Stasis Wards as quickly as possible, but that's usually not how it goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the other thing is that for the first time in this entire broadcast, we are live on Moon Dance, and of course, one of the features of that is... We got the is, bingo. Yeah, we got the bingo card going. We haven't seen Stargazers yet, but because Shh. it's a best of five, we, we could. We got the bingo. <laughs> Shaking my head as the pocket base has been taken. That is the advantage of this. So Chance doesn't have to open up with multiple oracles. He goes across the map with the first one. He doesn't need a second to protect his third because his third is already protected. Yeah. By walls and such. Mm. The third is already protected by the natural. How often can you say that? <laughs> exactly, it's disgusting, mate. It's absolutely disgusting. Uh, <laughs> shaking my head, shaking my head. One of the great features uh, about Moon Dance. <laughs> um, meanwhile, we do see Chance confirming that the pocket base hasn't been taken. He's throwing down a couple of tech structures, but he went for a Phoenix behind this, which means Chance, sorry, Nikic will not get a scout off. Yeah, I mean, he should get a little bit of an inkling. He'll probably go around and check the 
out of third base locations and get a little bit of a set set. Okay, Chad's is being playing this out a little bit safe, probably expanding back home. But other than that, that's not a whole lot to go off of. Exactly. Like, right now is a really scary moment for Nikic because if you look at his vision, he's working off of very little information. He knows about the Stargate opener, at least, but he doesn't know if there's a two-base all-in coming. He doesn't know if there's a Twilight Council. He doesn't know if there's a Robo. He doesn't know if there's a Templar Archives. Um, all of the above because <laughs> the tech yeah. is hidden at the third base. Oh, boy. I miss this unit so much, Light. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Warprism is on the way for a chance. And he's immediately going to make use of it. Exactly. Quantel, if you're watching, take note because a warp prism has been made and there's a lot of value to be had here with this prism. It's going to be going across the map so far. Unscouted right now. Station Trap going off in the main base is going to be avoided by Nikic. At the same time, Glaive Adepts, uh, sorry, regular Adepts, uh, distracting his opponent. But again, this is all a distraction. And they have been distracted because those are soon to be Archons on the way. Roaches are very far off in the distance. And by very far off in the distance, I mean there are none. Mm -hmm. Eventually there'll be a couple, but there are going to be none right now. There's nothing really that can stand up to the Archons. Yeah, the Ling check for a third base. They confirm there's nothing there. Meanwhile, there's no shield battery oh. behind this adept, so the Lynx can bust on in. We do see a wall trying to be set up, and it looks like the no! The probe body blocked the other probe, and uh. that was enough to prevent the shield battery from being thrown down. Seven probes are gone immediately, and there's a lot more where that came from. The wow. Archons have tried to reciprocate, but I don't think it's going to be enough light. Exactly. Zealots are uh, forced to be warped in back at home defensively when Chance wanted to be aggressive with them across the map with Charge Lord Archon. That was going to completely bamboozle and I think maybe even kill Nikic. But even the Phoenix goes down. The Archons are trying to do what they can. They have to be a little bit careful here. One Archon goes down. And I think Chance has just found out who bamboozles whom <laughs> in this particular matchup. Oh my Nothing God. has gone his way. Yeah, like everything was looking really good for Chance up until that run by. Like that was just, just the stars aligned here for Nikic. The, the wall was not a wall. It was never meant to be a wall. And now he's looking pretty fine. Like his drone count is insane. He's working on a fourth base. His Roach Warren is done. He's taking up as well into Ling Roach. Like he's got everything he needs. Yeah. One probe. I, yeah, I'm sorry, I can't stop thinking about <laughs> yeah. that one probe. Uh, it was just a little too, it took up a little too much space. Uh, it's a little bit of feels bad, man. Meanwhile, Nikish is actually being pulled apart right now. It looks like he's going to be able to not even defend the right-hand side. The base goes down on the left-hand side. Both queens fall to the Zealot run by as well. Nikish not really splitting up his army the way he needed to. Yeah, surprisingly, you know. At the very least, he's able to keep his drones alive. He's not going to be hurting too much on that, but I think he's given up on uh, going for a fourth base. Yeah, it's like, you want to kill my fourth? Okay, you just force my hand. Deal with it. Okay. <laughs> oh, That's no. what you made me do. How oh, is he avoiding this? <laughs> I'm, I have anxiety right now, right? Oh, my God. He's just close to it. He's the edging right board. now. He's touching tips with the stasis trap. Uh -oh. He does somehow he doesn't connect. He does not trigger the stasis trap, but he is being forced all the way back. Uh -oh. These immortals and archons are doing so much here, trading incredibly well. Yeah, maybe it would have been better if he did trigger yeah. the yes uh, stasis ward. True. <laughs> oh my god. So in the end, the mass counterattack from Nikic wasn't able to achieve what he needed it to. Again, the third base is safe and sound, so like it's really difficult to punish your opponent and break the natural on Moon Dance. So Chance is not going to be able to reestablish and try and regain foothold here at his fort. Yeah, even if you're able to avoid the Stasis Ward. Yeah. <laughs> oh, exactly. Exactly. Uh, behind this, Nikish again trying to. I, I mean, this is a scary thing. Nikish is taking a fourth at the same time as, as the Protoss player. So he's not doing well economically. Worker counts are even, which means that, again, the Protoss player has the advantage. The one thing that Nikish has going for him is that he is going for an infestation pit. It looks like he wants to go for a hive again. Yeah, pretty quickly. Uh, once again, so he's going to have that tech advantage. I will say that Nikki does have a little bit of a backup when. 
it comes to bases. He hasn't taken a pocket yet. Uh, yeah, the pocket is being saved for a rainy day. Meanwhile, the Archon drop uh, picks up a couple of drones. Zealot run by is going to run into a wall of roaches as well. So Nick is doing a better job at keeping his bases under control for the time being. But Chance is doing the best he can to find to find dents in that armor, to find ways in. Hey, you know what? Chance is caught back up when it comes to the income, when it comes to the macro. He's... A little bit behind when it comes to tech, when it comes to upgrades, but that's very easily rectified now that things are stable for him back home. Yeah, like this is a scary moment when the Protoss player gets their fourth base up and running. Now they're working on multiple forms of splash damage. The Immortal count is insane. He's got five Immortals right now. That's crazy. Disruptors are coming out. We have Archons as well. Like this is becoming a very well-rounded ground-based army. What Chance is lacking right now is, is kind of a gateway buffer, but um, if he doesn't move out, like he doesn't need it. Yeah, pretty much. And you know what? Best case scenario for <gasps> Chance right now oh. is... Oh! If Nikic does go for Ultras, very good Biles on top of that. Warpism takes both it and the Archon out for basically free. Exactly. You're wondering what? Where was that gateway for a buffer? It was basically being used to harass these zealot Ramwise on left hand, right, left hand, and right hand side was supposed to keep Nikic at bay. But with the death of that war prison, now he has so much more breathing room. And surprisingly, Chance is pushing out. Yeah, I'm not sure what uh, kind of forced his hand here. Okay, I guess it was just. Testing the water still a little bit. He retreats. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he just wanted to force Nikish to make army instead of drones for a moment. Um, doesn't want to overextend again. This army is looking quite vulnerable, so he cannot be caught out in the middle of the map. But at the same time, he pulls away the army of Nikish, and Zealots just hit the, the fifth and sixth. Yeah, may as well. They're getting a lot of drone kills. Roaches now move in to uh, defend. I gotta ask you, Light, as a Zerg player, is it fine losing nine workers at this stage? Because, you know, Nikki's gonna be, have, gonna be thinking of maxing out. I mean, that wasn't just fine. nine drones. That was also a hatchery as well. Like, <laughs> oh man, I thought that was canceled. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, that was a kill, it man. Was killed. Mm -hmm. So Nikish is, is actually really struggling to keep up with these zealot run buys. Um, he has been a little bit greedy. He hasn't been throwing down uh, spines. Like, there's no stack defense here on his fringe bases, so they are vulnerable. Likewise, though, he wants to try and counterattack. He goes for a massling run by. Yeah, and it's going to do its best to try to prevent the fifth base from coming up for chance. Oh, uh, Banelings actually crash and connect onto a lot of disruptors, so not that many purification overs to work with, but this is still a maturity immortal Archon army. You don't want to be fighting that with Lings, Banes, or Roaches. Yeah, exactly. And especially not with Ultras, what? <laughs> and, uh, Nikish has lost his mind. He sees six, old, six immortals, by the way, he sorry. Seven immortals and so many Archons, and he's going for Ultras? He said a bit too much, Rai. What can he say? I, I, I don't like this, Bobby. Don't like this. I just feel like he just hasn't been trading too efficiently right now. And here we go. Chance is pushing in. The ultras are not ready. Katniss plating is not ready. We have I, zero armor, by the way. Plus one carapace is only just now finishing up. I like how the ultras aren't ready. And it's like, yeah, they'll never be ready against this army. <laughs> what can I tell you? Ultras are good against Immortals and Archons. They're even worse when you're unupgraded. Oh god, we even have a couple of disruptors behind us as well. The first Nova goes off, does connect with the army. Nick is just trying to bring himself together. He wants to try and go for a bit of a surround, but again, I mean, there is a world where maybe he gets a surround and he gets like the juiciest Biles on the Immortals. Maybe, maybe that's what he's hoping for. It can work. Um, uh, the, 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 he needs like everything to work well for him though. Oh god! Yeah, it's one of those things where I feel like he's gotten lucky twice this game. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's gonna get lucky three times. Uh, exactly, as more Novas are going off, the base does go down, uh -huh. the Ultras are gonna be going down yep. as well because these Immortals are just doing so much. Yeah, for a very split second, I fooled myself into believing that, you know, the Ultras were actually dealing with the army, but when it's all said and done, there was no buffer remaining and the Ultras went down. GG, Chance takes game number one. Gee. I kind of... 
G G. Yeah, I kind of wanted the ultras to work if I'm being honest. Like, <laughs> but I mean, in my deepest desire. I I know, I know. We all want, we always want the ultras to work because they never yeah. do. And that the problem is that they <laughs> they never do. <laughs> we, to be fair, we saw them work earlier today. There is there is a place for ultras, but if you see if you're like we saw against Quantel, Quantel saw the ultras and then transitioned into immortals. Here, Nick is soy mortals and transition into oceans. It, does, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so, that's not how it works. Yeah. Had, yeah, had a step mixed up here and there, to say the least. Mm -hmm. aye, aye, aye. And it's definitely a shame that, uh, you know, he did end up. Uh, well, I guess it is a bit of perspective, right? It's a little bit of a shame from the side of Nickish. Nick uh huh. N Nickish. To kind of, yeah, to kind of allow Chance to climb back from that. Because, again, the start of the game went incredibly well for Nikki. That was a Ling run by that did, one, did so much, but also should never have happened in the first place. That was a once-in-a-career, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity opening. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the end, Chance really did prove why he's the number one seed and, you know, how he's able to... Uh, kind of spring back from setbacks like that. But, you know, hopefully this bodes well for the rest of the series, and definitely expecting it to be a little bit closer from here on out. As we load in to Data C, where I want to be part of your world. I remember the song. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> in the top left-hand corner of the map, starting all the way in the bottom left-hand corner, actually. Not the top, well, it's perspective, really. The Red's a Protoss player coming down from Atlanta, Korea, representing Team Super. He is Chance. And spawning in the top right hand corner of Data Under the Sea, we have the Blue Zerg player himself hailing from the land of Belarus, representing Team Platoon. It is Nikic. Or something like that. <laughs> We need to rewatch The Little Mermaid. Mm. We need to. We do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, we need to watch Kronk's Groove. No, we don't. <laughs> no, we do not, Yaku. We do not. <laughs> oh, God. Again, that's another one of those things where. <laughs> You may have been watching some Disney related movies and Especially because of this. Remember, Asher was pressuring me the other day. He was like, mate, when is the Little Mermaid Bureau party? What's going on? Yeah. Uh, I got you, Asher. <laughs> uh, but um yeah, that was a wild game number one. Again, it did feel like Nikic was being a little bit stubborn because he saw the army composition of Chance and he made the decision to go all the way up into Hive and to go for those Ultras. So this could just be his preferred style of play when the game goes on long enough in this matchup. And if that's true, then I, I worry for him a little bit. Yeah, my question is, does it work? I mean, it has to, right? I mean, it works He's against able Quantel. to make it this far. It worked against Quantel, but also... You know, that wasn't a late game scenario, was it? Yeah, yeah, like, you know, Quantel's army was more gateway focused, to be fair, you know? Meanwhile, Nikisha's, sorry, Chances is, was more robo. Um, so hopefully, hopefully our Zerg player can adapt because ideally I would love to see a back and forth series. I want it, I want us to go ideally all the way to five games, uh, but we'll see. Like, I already see like chat catching up a little bit being like, yo, you know what would have been great? Like. Chance's army didn't really shoot up too much. You know, maybe going into a greater spire would have been a little bit better. I mean, to be fair, you know, we, we could have seen, like, a couple of different tech choices from Nikish. Anything other than and Ultras. He, <laughs> yeah. He had a choice to make. He had options. And he made his choice. Yeah. Like, he, honestly, if he had stuck with just Ling Bane, Roach, Ravager, that would have been better. Like... <laughs> it would have been more cost efficient. <laughs> it would have. It would have. At the very least. Oh, God. 
But alas, you know, that was game one, and now we are moving on into game number two, and we'll see how things differ here. As already, uh, Chance going for the Void Ring. Yeah, Chance kind of switching back to his default mode. And again, there's no pocket base on Data C. Everything's underwater, so yeah, he has to be a little bit more defensive, and he has to take that a little bit more seriously. He does. He does have to take that more seriously, and... Ooh, okay. The Void Ray just trying to hunt down that Overlord. Overlord did bypass the Void Ray and is going to be able to sneak into the main base and should barely see the Stargate, should barely see that an Oracle. Uh, will it see the Oracle? Up, oh, up. Oh. It will not. Oh, just barely going to avoid that Oracle. But he should have, you know, a little bit of an inkling of what Chance is going for here. Who built just one Void Ray and nothing else? Well, a lot of players, but not Chance. <laughs> not Chance, mate. Here we go. We already have a Spore here at the third base. Queens are in position. The Oracle taking a little bit of hole damage as well. Being swatted away. And Chance, all he gets done here with his first Oracle is a, t a Creep Tumor. Not bad. <laughs> Sh shake him ahead, yeah. Shake him no ahead. Tumor. <laughs> True. And he gets a second. He gets oh, a second. He gets Dude. a second. He got a second Tumor, mate. Yeah. Could have been one. Could have been got none. two. Could have been none. <laughs> but he got two. He got two. And this is what I expected to see because we saw this against Eba. He goes, avoid Ray, one Oracle straight into Glavideps. We have a gateway explosion on the way. And this is why I was saying earlier, I hope Nikich was watching that series. I hope he was in the chat, <sighs> not just to, to boost our viewership. Uh, but, <laughs> but so he could he could recognize that Chance is prone to, to whipping out those Glaives. Hey, you know what? I appreciate that he's getting the Roach Warren for safety, but the fact that he is getting plus one melee yeah. doesn't bode too well uh, against the Adept. So, to be fair, if you have enough Lings, plus one will actually be really useful in the Adept defense, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, it's all about when Nikish stops droning, because right now he just made a, a wave of seven workers. Uh, Adepts are coming across the map. This hasn't been spotted, <laughs> by the way. Adepts. Yeah, he needs roaches ASAP. The roach warren is done. We don't see any roaches in production. He's making things. Oh, no. And if the Adepts were in uh, lower numbers, then I think that I think that the mass links would actually have been worthwhile. I think the plus one melee would have been worthwhile, but uh, that's an insane number of Adepts. That chance is throwing across the map. Mm -hmm. It really is, mate. The Bailey nest is done, so we could see Bailings as a response. Roaches are on the way. Nikish hasn't lost too many workers. He just uh, just abandoned this third base. Um, so he is handling this relatively well, actually going for a counterattack. I think that's the right call. I mean, those links aren't going to be doing much back at home. True. But we have the Oracle. We have the Void Ray. A chance is prepared to defend against a counter harass. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the sentry does get surrounded, but we do have an overcharge. We do have a warp in as well. The sentry somehow is not dying. And that's without a battery overcharge. <laughs> that's, that's mind disgusting. you. <laughs> wow. Sentries, man. I always said they were the most overpowered unit in the Protoss uh, roster. They're pretty good, mate. They're pretty good. Meanwhile, the EFs, they got into the main base. They get into the natural. They're headed towards a third as well. 13 workers have gone down. And behind this, Chance went double robo. He's making two immortals at a time. Once again, creating just about the most anti-roach army you can get as a Protoss player. He's not even done yeah. with the adepts uh. here. He's still getting more drones, people. Ah, uh, Chance, please, Papi. He's already dead. Stop it. The one dead gets one more drone. Oh, my God. And in the end, With literally dying breath. With his dying breath, he gets the last drone here for Nikish. Nikish down to half the worker count of the Protoss. And now he's all in. He has to go for a Hail Mary play. Yeah, at the very least, he has to kill the third base here of Chance. But, uh... I'm not liking his chances too much late. I see a stasis ward. I see a stasis. I see a void ray. I see units that don't shoot up. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, no. This bile. Okay, could have been worse. <laughs> or could it? Uh -huh. <laughs> As the force fields provide such a good choke point for the Protoss army, the immortals are completely unfazed by the banelings, and they clean up the roaches so well. All of a sudden, Chance finds himself a match point. Oof. He does find himself a match point. GG. Chance 
credit where credit is due he did a very good job at hiding his build at hiding his glaive adapts and uh Nikic was only relying on his first overlord and you were pointing it out he was anticipating blink stalkers yeah. that's why we saw plus one melee that's why we saw drones that's why we didn't see a prioritization of those roaches Nikic had no idea what was coming his way he just didn't have a, a, a follow-up way to, to to scout and figure out what was going on yeah unfortunately and he had to pay and he paid the full price for it I don't think game number two was even half as... The entire length of uh, game number two, I don't think, was even half the length of game number one. Yeah, exactly. Like, again, it just goes to show, especially in this matchup, or especially for a Zerg player, scouting is the most important thing. And if, if you fail with your first scout, you need to try again with a second. As soon as your lair is done, or maybe even get Overlord speed, or rely on your links, you have to try and piece together what the hell your opponent is doing. And, uh, you know, also react to it. Don't build altars. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be continuing our best of five grand finales here on inside and out, but also outside and in. That's going to be the next map. I call it now. In the top right hand corner map, spawning all the way in the top right hand corner, we have our red Protoss player coming out from the land of Korea, representing, I almost said this. Team Super, he is Chance. And spawning in the bottom left hand corner of Inside and Out, our Zerg player has had enough. He is hailing from the land of Belarus, representing Team Platoon. Going for a 12 pool, it is Nikic. I've been questioning the choices of Nikic throughout uh, oh my God. this series. He gets scouted, by the way. Uh, but there's get... a proxy hatch. Yeah, here we go. The wall will... No, no! No, the proxy decided! Oh, my God. He goes to the proxy hatch behind the wall. So the wall will indeed be a wall here for our Protoss player. Lings are on the way. Chance is responding. And the first Zelda is being chronoed out. Yeah, is it going to be here in time? It should be. I yeah. don't even think the uh, drone from canceling this hatchery will have enough DPS to really, you know, stop the stop the zealot. Yeah, the wall is gonna be a wall here across the map. <gasps> Chance trying to scout zealot. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that worked for a sec. So good. We even have a couple of probes here to make sure that the zealot doesn't get surrounded. If it does, the boys are here to back him up. Just like so. You know, pre always appreciate the live demonstration. Now the second cell is going to be out, and now that the Adepts are going to come out, uh, yeah, this is just what the end. Oh, yeah. nice little uh, early victory here. Exactly, a little bit of miscontrol by chance. He loses his first zealot. More boys are being pulled here because of that. Adepts are on the way, and once the Adepts come out, it's going to be lights out for this Ling run by a Lizarding push, but the Cyber Core, it's going to go down. The hatch finishes. Wow. The hatch finishes. <laughs> That the Cyber Core, I mean, the walls the wall. uh, Chets get warp in. Chets get warp in any more adepts. He can't warp in any adepts, mate. There is no warp gate, so he can't warp anything in. The Lings get into the main base. Another probe go goes down, and he always gets a full surround. And there's no and overcharge. Get, there's no overcharge. There's no Nexus here. Two overcharge, dude. <laughs> Oh my god, the Lings have to be banked up. He's waiting. He's biding some time here for the Queen to add that extra additional DPS. He does dive on top of one of these adepts. More Lings are on the way. Nick is behind this. He has an option. He could drone up if he wanted to. And there we go. A couple of drones are on the way. Yeah, he's droning up back at home, but producing Lings over here on the other side of the map. Really maximizing his chances. But also, you know, kind of losing a lot of money in the meantime. Oh, he is, but it's kind of worth it because you know what? This hatchery means that there's going to be no natural base. There's the creep as well. It's going to take a while to recede. Another probe goes down in the main. The worker count has been evened up, but again, the chance is going to take a while before he can expand. Yeah, in the meantime, he's just doing whatever he can with his depths. Trying to make sure that, you know, Chance's economy isn't going too out of control. Exactly, and one, two, oh my god, three? 
Uh, okay, two drones go down. So Chance, again, doing a really good job at just hindering the economy of Nikish, making sure he can't just run away with it. Uh, meanwhile, again, the creep is slowly receding. The eggs Lopper. doing whatever they can to be annoying as well. Lava has an insane amount of armor, doesn't it? Oh, it does. It does. Or is it health? No, it's armor. Yeah. <laughs> Aye, aye, aye. And now Chance, yeah, he's forced to throw down his tech structure instead because he I mean, he has to spend his money somehow and he's going for a Twilight Council. Yeah, may as well transition earlier if uh, you can't get that natural base up in time. Exactly. And now this is where I worry if we've droned up too much. Link speed is not going to be a part of this. Chance has four zealots and they're coming across the map and four zealots alongside two adepts. This is a... This is a scary force, uh, especially when you only have slowlings and two queens to defend. Yeah, we'll see how good the surrounds can be. A couple more lings are on the way. Of course, Nikik, with the defense advantage, is going to be able to reinforce a lot quicker than Chance will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. He's just testing the waters. He sees the mass amount of lings, and he doesn't know when ling speed is done, and that's going to be in 10 seconds, so Chance is not going to risk it. He is going to back off, but behind this... Oh my god, he's going for a Dark Shrine! Yeah, love to see it, or at least I do. This makes total sense right now. If your chance, Nikic has to catch back up. He's not going to be throwing down Spore Crawlers. He's just yeah. confirmed that there's no Stargate. And he's not going to have the lair for quite some time. Exactly. Is he going to have the wherewithal to throw down a Spore? He saw the Twilight Council. He saw it upgrading. But there is a chance that there could be a Dark Shrine. So we'll see if he does go for it at the same time. He's going to go eh, for a I big Ling, Ling counter attack. I say Ling counter attack. Bailings are being morphed in as well. Yeah, there are a couple of stalkers out now, though. So that definitely throws a little bit of a wrench in the plans here for Nikic. Yeah, he's joining up behind this as well. The Adepts are going to be able to sneak in and deal some worker damage, but the Bailings are rolling on in. And they connect immediately with a handful of Zealots. The rest of the wall is still alive and holding strong. This one Zealot doesn't even need Overcharge to stay alive. Oh, yeah, exactly. Speaking of overcharge, we do not have enough energy. The Ling's get a kill on the Stalker as well. At the same time, the Adepts did get into the natural base. Four or five drones went down. I up six drones. Yeah, Glaive's finished up pretty quickly. So they were able to help in both the harass and, his, and the defense. Yeah, moving across the map right now, and the Rotoron has only now been thrown down. Uh. Nikic has, or Chet, sorry, has not warped in a Dark Templar yet. We may not need it, mate. We may not need DTs because Glaive Adepts are insane, especially when there are no roaches. We see a split just in case there were Bailings waiting on top of the ramp. Oh my god. <laughs> what an absolute master. <laughs> it's insane. Bailings are waddling on in, and you know what? They will get some juicy connections. It looks like he will clean up every single one of these Adepts. But again, this isn't really the final form of chance. That is the DTs. Yeah, that's the final form, and there's absolutely zero, zero uh, detection at all. The lair only just started, and one spore has been thrown down. It's not even, I don't think it can get body blocked, uh, at least not easily. Uh, Two DTs should be enough to overpower this and take it out. Yeah, the spore is going to go down, and with the death of this spore, also the hopes and dreams here of Nikish. We have another DT at the third base. GG, well played, gets called, and Chance, he does it. He defends against the 12 full. He takes game number three, and he is our Sparkling Tuna Cup 20 champion. Proving once again why he was today's top seed, why everybody considered him the favorite in today's tournament. That was one of the wildest finals I think we've ever had, Light, especially in the PBC, but... <clears throat> excuse me. <sighs> At the end of the day, <laughs> in all of that chaos, Chance, he stood strong and he, yeah, he just weathered it all and proved himself to be uh, an agent of order, if you will. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, is he, though? Because, again, he had his own style of well, play. And, oh, God. He very much so did. And, you know, I, I still pretty much can't believe the all three games that we had here today, Light, uh, or in the Grand Finals, Light, they were just not something that I think we'll see replicated ever. 
<laughs> yeah, it was a wild ride. We had, again, we don't see ultras that often, to be honest. And we had plenty of it here tonight in this tournament, in this broadcast. Um, Nikic definitely has a certain style of play to him. And he's definitely a lot of fun to watch. Um, and even though he may have fallen 3-0 here in the Grand Finals, he had a great road to victory. He had a great time getting to the Grand Finals. It's our first time casting him. It's the first time seeing him here in the Sparkling Tuna Cup. He almost went all the way. He almost became a Royal Rotor. And yep. it's really cool to see not just him, but also like other, other up-and-coming European players or up-and-coming players, period, just do well today. Yeah, I mean, we were... Talking a little bit about it, but today's bracket was definitely the week of the up-and-comers. Again, mm -hmm. a lot of our favorites and a lot of our regulars weren't quite able to come back in. So we had players like Eba, youngest GM ever. We had players like Spear and Rebellion, who I kind of consider to be that next uh, mm -hmm. generation of GSL players coming Control. down. Control, of course, yeah. How could I forget about Control? Mm -hmm. A lot of really uh, good matchups happening over here and if you would like to take a look at some of them that weren't casted exclamation mark patreon in, in the chat or sub for five dollars here in uh no i think we don't have a minimum actually when it comes to uh the what's it called the replay send out so yeah just do whatever you uh want yeah, yeah, we do send replay packs out of our tournaments or any tournament that we are allowed to send replay packs out. So that's Sparkling Tuna Cup, go by Hyperion, Sentimento Latino, and a Apprentice when the season does come around. Um, and yeah, yeah, we share whatever we can. So we do provide that to subscribers. But again, I hope everyone really enjoyed themselves today. Like, I, I was really excited just because, again, we didn't have a clear favorite yeah. there was no Bjorn, keen nightmare art um it was a little bit more up in the air and i mean yeah. there's a world out there where chance almost didn't even make it to the finals we could have had a yeah. zvz we could have had a zvz and that would have caused uh, both players to break their wrists <laughs> i imagine uh... <laughs> oh my god maybe, maybe but yeah this yeah this is i think one of the one of the I like how you kind of described it there. One of the most up in the air tournaments we've had so far. Obviously, Chance had an advantage, but like you said, he's proven that he could bleed. And even in these finals that he kind of swept in, he almost lost game number one. Mm -hmm. And game number two, as a matter of fact. So, yeah, it really could have been. It was pretty much anyone's game today. And if you would like to help out some of these players tonight, uh, especially our semi finalists who haven't don't currently have a payout exclamation mark Maturino in the chat will bring you to sparkling tuna cups Maturino page if you would like to add a little bit to the prize pool uh once we hit a threshold of what was it 70 usd if i remember correctly or something like that we will be expanding the prize pool to not just today's finalists but also the semi-finalists yeah, we need, we, need to, we need to get better at promoting that. Uh, <laughs> but yes, exclamation mark match Reno in the chat if you guys want to support the tournament. Unfortunately, we don't have any coupon codes, um, but we do have we do have a couple of quest rewards, I think. And again, it's just a way for you, the viewer, to support the players if you want. We don't get a cut of anything on match Reno. It all just goes straight to the top players of the tournament. So yeah, we're very transparent with the split of the money and where it all goes. So you can support those players there on sparkling tunica oh sorry on matrina for sparkling tunica um i mean if starduck makes it to like a finals or something that is does that count as taking a cut <laughs> nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's personal use yeah yeah look, i said it before okay he's the disowned son okay he's not the <laughs> <laughs> shaking my head shaking. Well, he's trying to find his way into my good graces once again so we'll see we'll see um but yeah regardless gg well played i hope everyone enjoyed themselves i know i did uh, we even had the rare zvt that we almost never had that we never had oh yeah <laughs> uh, i'm surprised we got one yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah it's been it's been a great tournament and for those who don't know, this is a weekly tournament, so we're going to be back next mm -hmm. week as well. The only times that we don't run Sparkling Tuna Cup is if this clashes with something like Dreamhack or Home Story Cup or TSL or GSL. Um, if it clashes with a major tournament, we usually go on hiatus. We want to 
support those major tournaments as much as we can and direct everyone there. Um, but if there isn't another event going on... We also want to on, watch them, so... Yeah, we also want to watch them as well. All right, do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that counts as supporting them. True, true. So we do want to watch them as well and, and support them. Um, so if there is ever, like, any kind of, like, conflicting or overlapping s schedules, then we do typically go on hiatus. But other than that, check us out here every single week on Wednesday... Or Tuesday, if you're in Europe, wherever you are. Um, no, it's still Wednesday. Time zones, man. Yeah, time zones. <laughs> time it's Wednesday in Europe. It's Tuesday in NA as well. No, it's Wednesday in NA as well. Yeah. 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 So Wednesdays, we got you with Sparkling Tuna Cup. Uh, a unique tournament that brings everyone over from the entire world. They all come together here to fight for that Grand Tuna. Yeah. To be crowned Sparkling Tuna. There you go. There you go. One day we'll get a Dong One sponsorship. <laughs> one day, one day, the dream. Uh, but with that, uh, Yaku, do you have anything you want to add before we head? Oh, sorry, I should say, do you want to let the people know who you are? Because oh, I know okay. you you have been casting a little bit less recently. Yes, I definitely have. But the good news is, I only have two assignments left in this term of school, and after that, I'm done. So I might be streaming again next week or. At the very least, two weeks from now, Twitch.tv at m. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> I almost set my Twitter handle instead of my Twitch. Uh, you know what? Exclamation mark Yaku Zaku in the chat. I think Nightbot will keep you covered, but it's Yaku Zaku one on Twitch and Pore Yaku Zaku on Twitter and exclamation mark Discord for the Cranky Ducklings Discord. I'm there. <laughs> what about you, like? Yeah. Yaku's there, Kuro's there, Steel Mold, Asher, Starduck, we're Eba, we're all there on Discord. Right. It's uh, yeah, it's so good, man. It's so good. Thank you so much for casting. Um, everyone, give a special shout out to Yaku because he has been really busy with his studies recently, and that's why he hasn't been casting much. And even that's... even today when he did cast, like he he is like you know. Uh, a little bit worn out from you know so many assignments and so much that he's had that, to do for school. So. That's why I grew out my hair. <laughs> I your hair just reflects your inner <laughs> chaos right now and everything that's happening with your life. <laughs> oh god. So yeah, yeah. With that, thank you so much everyone for watching. If you want to, if you want to follow me, light underscore VIP on Twitch and Twitter. I have been streaming throughout the week. Um, I've been trying to stream throughout the week on a daily basis, so you can follow me there uh, on my journey to try and get into Masters too. Uh, it's been a pretty rocky road. Uh, <laughs> today was Ice cream. today was fun, but um, I mentioned <laughs> it before, mate. <laughs> Leo Rush. I hit, in Leo Rush. I, hit, for, I don't know why, but I hit a 5.5k Protoss in Leo Rush. I hit Neuro today, who's 5.1 Zerg. Like, I've been. Uh, look, the ladder has not been kind to me when it comes to my opponents. So they've been gatekeeping me away from Masters to shaking my head. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to get there. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So if you're interested in that, follow me there. If you're only interested in our casts, in our broadcasts, of, of tournaments, then follow us here on the Cranky Ducklings. We're live throughout the week. Myself, Yaku, Kuro, Steel Mold, Milk and Cookies, Asher, Chase, Darking, whoever we have, you know, some of the older, older guard like Milk, Dastan. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of people here on the channel to cast, and we try our best to bring you as much StarCraft coverage as we can. Um, the next big thing on the horizon is DreamHack Atlanta qualifiers are coming soon tm oh uh, boy <laughs> yes, oh boy yes, eh? yeah <laughs> oh god so yeah yeah that's gonna be our next kind of big project soon tm but our weekly uh, events are still running and our next broadcast is this friday it's gonna be sea duckling open with steel mold yeah it's gonna be fun be sure to be there Yes, or else. Or else. The puppet will come after you. The steel will come after you. It needs you. a soul. <laughs> it needs to feed, papi. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, there's not much left of steel mode, let's be real. Um, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't. Yeah. Uh, 
We haven't seen the state of him in a, in a long time. We, I, I think he may have really, literally been taken over. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, with that, thank you so much everyone, for watching. Thank you so much for the support. And we will see you guys yes. on Friday for Sea Duck Lagoon. Indeed we shall. Bye. Ciao. Bella. Oh no.